Hallelujah. Glory to God. You said faith kids? Them little kids? We got some loaded kids. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I believe God. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Let's go tonight over to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. And uh, we are here for a couple different reasons. There's that healed woman. Amen. Praise God. Good to see you. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, that girl's just a walking miracle. Amen. Amen. I mean, financial miracle. She had some medical procedures done, and it was just going to be real expensive. And they kept trying to tell her they couldn't help her with it, but they did. Amen. Paid all of it. Amen. You know, it matters where you go to church. Amen. It matters what you're hearing. Because she had the faith to believe, no, this is, we're going to take care of this. God's going to take care of this. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So there's a couple things we're doing tonight. We're, uh, first and foremost, um, Pastor Mark and Pastor Angela are joining themselves to our fellowship. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, we're going to ordain them and uh, receive them into the Faith Builders Fellowship. And we're also going to look at some things uh, concerning where the fellowship's going, what God's speaking to us, what He's saying. And uh, the future of the churches and the fellowship is brighter than it's ever been. Stronger than it's ever been. We've been 22 straight years here, and it's stronger than it's ever been. Uh, we've been going on five years in Little Rock now, and it's stronger than it's ever been. And uh, as something gains strength, it's added to. When something begins to get weak, there begins to be a, a falling away. But when something gets stronger, there's an adding to it. Amen. And this is, you have to understand for both bodies represented here tonight. Because when you join yourselves to a work of God, the work of God in your midst grows. When you join yourself to a vision that doesn't replace the vision, the calling that God gave you, it complements and supplements and strengthens the vision God gave you. It makes it possible for that thing to go forth even in a stronger measure. Amen. And so the vision that God gave us was to build faith and frame worlds by the Word of God. Raising up a spiritual production center, producing life, city, state, nation, and world. God has given into our hands the cities that we're in for the preaching of the gospel. Amen. This is the most important place on the face of the earth. The local church. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. And uh, verse 11, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, this is a familiar passage of Scripture, but we're going over this tonight because we're dealing with the subject of ordination. We're dealing with the subject of vision. And very often in the church world, ordination is just something that's kind of mechanical. It's kind of technical. Uh, you know, well, we're going to ordain them. But ordination is ordaining into something and setting aside for something. It's not licensing. It's ordaining. You can be a licensed minister and not be ordained into an office. But when you're ordained into an office, the anointing and the equipment with the office comes with it. Amen. 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 
So he says here in Ephesians 4, let's start in verse 11. And he, Jesus, gave some, and we could say to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Here's why. For the perfecting or the maturing or the advancement of the saints. So if you're born again, you're a saint. And the pastor that God gave you is there for your maturing. Right? But it's for a reason. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So he perfects you so you can function in the ministry so that you can be a blessing to the body. So anything that you're called to do, you're not called to do because of you. You're called to do it because of the people God's placed you with. Right? Amen. Until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man under the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth or from here on out. So here's the thing. The moment you found your pastor... You started growing up. Amen. 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 So look at your neighbor and say, your baby days are almost over. And now tell them, because you got a pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So from henceforth, from, from that time, we're no more children. Notice what he says, tossed to and fro. Carried about with every wind of doctrine, with the slight of man, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Is that what it says? So the moment that you found your pastor and the church that God called you to, you started growing up and you started uh, obtaining spiritual discernment so that you're not easily fooled like people are that have no pastor and have no church. Amen. Sheep without a sheepfold are unsafe. Meaning they have no security. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, I see that you're in church. So I perceive you're safe. Amen. See, what bothers me as a pastor about people just coming in and out and being there one week and not there the next week, what bothers me is they're unsafe. Because something's being said that night they need to hear. Something's being said that morning that they need to hear. Amen. A rescue is there. Right? God puts in the mouth of your pastor, of your man or your woman of God, things that they don't know they need to say, but they come to church and you're there, and what you need draws out of them the word that will change it. I may not know what you need, but there's an anointing in my mantle that knows what you need. Amen. Amen. You, you understand? And, and, and in that way, you don't have to be hard on people. If people are getting answers, you don't got to beat on them to come to church. If people are getting answers, you don't have to be a, 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 a hard head. I've known some hard-headed pastors. Mean. Just, just look straight ahead. That's exactly, that's exactly right. Amen. Now, I'm saying this for a reason. So, if, if I'm in the local church, see, we're, we're talking about the office of the pastor or ordaining into that office. There's an anointing that follows that that carries answers. That's why you don't ever judge what your pastor said by the TV preacher. You judge what the TV preacher said by your pastor. Right? Why? Why? Because they're the ones that are anointed to speak into your life. They have the answer. 
I've had people say, well, you know, my pastor's just a man. When he steps into his anointing, he's anything but just a man. He's the farthest thing from just being a man. She's the farthest thing from just being a woman. She has and he has an uplink to spiritual knowledge and spiritual understanding because that's their flock, that's their church, that's their sheep, and God will speak to them especially and directly for you and about you. Amen. Happens all the time. Amen. Because that's, that's, that's the office. It's not just a, an anointing of the pastor. It's an office. And as that pastor grows in that office and learns to use all the machinery in the office, the, 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 the easier it is for you to receive your answer. That's why you're excited when you come to church. Not just because we're going to have great worship and we're going to shout because my man or my woman of God, my man or my woman of God, my man of God or my, my woman of God is going to say something that's going to transform my life. Amen. Amen. My God. Amen. Amen. Are, are you following me? That's, oh Jesus, I better hush about that. That, listen, listen. That's why over the years, I've had people, a guy used to come to church all the time, and when he'd see me, he'd go, what's up, bud? And finally, one day, we were in the back at a class, and he goes, what's up, bud? I said, bud's my dad, I'm pastor. Because you got to understand something. Remember what Jesus said? He said, if you give a, a prophet a cool drink of water, you get a prophet's reward. If you give a righteous man a cool drink of water in the name of a righteous man, you get a righteous man's reward. And then he said, if you give one of these little children a cup of cold water just in the name of a disciple, you'll in no wise lose your reward. Your pastors, your man and your woman of God, they, are, they can speak into your life to the level of respect that you give them. If you call them Bill or Jane or Jim, then you get what Bill or Jane or Jim can give you. If you call them Brother Steele or Brother Gazaway, then you get what Brother Gazaway can give you or Brother Steele. But when you say, that's my pastor, you get what your pastor can give you. Amen. And make no mistake, that's your pastor. That's your pastor. You take ownership of your pastor. Amen. Oh, I'm helping you tonight. Why? Because there's answers there. There's answers there. Amen. That's why Paul said, remember Paul said, he said, I'm the apostle to the Gentiles. Then what did he say? I magnify my office. I've spent years teaching on the office of the pastor and I didn't want to do it when I started because I said, God, I don't want people to think I'm full of myself. And he said, you're their pastor. If you don't teach them how to respond to it, who will? Nobody can feed you like your pastor. Nobody can speak right to the areas of your life like your pastor. Amen. Not Ken Copeland, not... Not George Pearson, not, right? And, and I have great respect for all of them. I go to all their meetings. Amen. Very, very highly involved. But I want you to understand that nobody speaks into my life like my pastor. 1 Corinthians 12. Boy, that, that was worth combing your hair and coming to church for. <laughs> Let me see. Most of y'all combed your hair anyway. Is that Arlene? Arlene, how are you doing? Stand up, Arlene. Stand up. I, I want y'all to know something. I have known Arlene for over 20 years. The, the first church that we ever attended in Kansas City, Arlene was a member there. It's good to see you, girl. I'm glad you're with them. Praise God. Good to see you. Praise God. Amen. I look back there and say, I, I know her. Boy, she used to sing the insides out of that microphone. I, I remember she broke her leg, 
and, 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 and came to church limping, singing, in, in a cast, singing. Hallelujah. Wow. How long have you been with them now? How long has she been with y'all? Years, huh? Thirteen years. My land. Praise God. That blesses me. It blesses you when you look back and you see people that started in the kingdom with you and they're still in the kingdom. That, that's unusual. Amen. So praise God. All right, now we get away from that Arlene distraction. And get, I'm joking about that, you know. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12. And let's start in verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ. And members in particular or collectively. So all of us in here tonight are the body of Christ. And God. Everybody say God. God. He says God has set some in the church. He's about to tell us those offices that God. Who? God. Has set in the church. Not people. God. Ordination is something God does. When we ordain pastors or ministers, we are just simply agreeing with God and doing what He wants done. Amen. 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 See, we didn't vote about this. I didn't go to anybody and say, hey, you know, is it cool if, if we ordain... Uh, Pastor Mark and Pastor Angela as pastors. I didn't no because you don't vote about that. It's a God thing. Yes. Amen. And when you recognize the call and you recognize the anointing, you place them in that office. Amen. But notice who does the setting. God has set some in the church. First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, gifts of healings, helps. Here's the pastor's office. Governments. So who set that office in the church? God. God. Why? What did Ephesians 4 say? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come in the unity of the knowledge of the faith. That's why God set them in the office. Every ministry gift is crucial for the church, but the only ministry gift given to the local church was the pastor. You can have a local church without an evangelist. But you can't have one without a pastor. Mm. Well, you know, I believe I could do just as good a job as him. You can't. Don't worry. You can't. Because you've got to be set in that office. It's like some people, some people uh, were sent and some just went. Like the guy plowing one day, or, or out working one day, and he, and he walking down the street, and he saw a big GP in the sky. And he said, oh, go preach. So he quit his job and, and went out and starved. And he went to God and said, and said uh, you know, I saw the sign, go preach. He said, no, that was go plow. <laughs> That's a little humor, very little. <clears throat> but God said, Amen. I've had people tell me before, Pastor, sometimes you're very bold when you're preaching. God set me here. Amen. What did Paul say over and over again in his writings? Paul, an apostle by the Lord Jesus Christ, not by men. Is that what he said? Yes, not by men. Men didn't call me. Men didn't call me an apostle. God called me an apostle. God, did, God called these people pastors. God called me a pastor. Nobody else. And then God, notice, set them in the church. So who set them in the church? So the pastor is a gift given to the local church, listen, by the head of the church. And the head of the body, the Lord Jesus. So Pastor Mark Gasway, Pastor Angela Gasway, the head of the church himself. Place them there. Amen. 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 Well, by whose authority are you here? The authority of the Lord, head of the church. Amen. Right? So God has set these gifts in the church. One of the meanings of the word set is ordained. God has ordained that these offices be in the church. 
Amen. And I'm not just teaching this way because of, of the service that we're in. I teach this way a lot in the church. That's why you've got to understand something. Remember what Paul wrote in the book of Romans? He said, uh, talking about authority, he said, the powers that be there of God. And he said, be careful about, about uh, 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 usurping them because they're the powers of God. Amen. When, when you keep this in mind that God put my pastor there, that God placed them there as a help to me, as a, as a source of anointing and a source of victory, everything changes in your life. And, 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 and people will say, well, you know, uh, uh, but you make it sound like, you know, just that, that it's about the man. It's not about the man. It's about the anointing on the man. It's about the anointing on the woman. Am I helping you? So one of the meanings of the word set is ordained. Ordination is a setting into an office. We talked about governments being the office of the pastor. That word governments can be translated the one who steers the ship. So the board don't steer the ship. The board is the deckhands. That makes sure the ship gets where the pastor's steering it. See, I'm, I'm the pastor. This, this pulpit is the steering wheel of our church and fellowship. Right? I'm, I'm on deck with the wheel in my hand. I say, unfurl the sails. And John runs over and unfurls the sails. John doesn't say, well, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Unfurl the sails. I, why? I don't have time to unfurl the sails. I'm driving the boat. Right? Amen. Right? It's like flying a plane. If you're the pilot and you're flying the plane, it doesn't matter what's going on in the back. Somebody's got to fly the plane. I mean, I hope everybody's good back there. I hope they got everything they want. But I've got to fly the plane. So somebody's got to steer the ship. And it's not doing it in a heavy-handed, uh, ultra-authoritative manner. It's just understanding my part and my office. My part in this body is pastor. I'm a part of this body, but my part of it is to be the pastor. The pastor steers the ship. I'm, I'm a sheep because I'm under a pastor, but I'm a pastor over sheep, and it's my job to direct them, to lead them to good pasture, to protect them, to make sure their lives add up to what God wants it to be. And, and I can't do that if I'm not steering the ship. Amen. Now, I mean, I have a wonderful board and I talk to them about things and, and bounce things off of them. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, God set me there and I'm going to give an account. Paul said, remember what Paul said? He said, my job is to make sure, he said this to the Galatian church, that when I present you to Christ, I present you fully mature. Let your pastor mature you. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, I just believe I'll grow up. <laughs> you cannot find a pastor just anywhere. You only find a pastor in the local church. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we're, we're getting to vision as well. Look at Acts 20. Oh, glory. Whew. I just had a feeling about tonight. Acts 20, verse 28. Paul has just had a pastor's conference in Ephesus. And he's about to leave. Paul had planted this church in Ephesus. He had came and beat back hell and destroyed the enemy and, 
Now he's leaving. He's going across the sea to Philippi. And he talks to the pastors here and he says, Take, therefore unto, take, their, take heed therefore unto yourselves. Notice this. And to all the flock. Now here's something else to see. Over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. To feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing, grievous wolves will enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So notice something. The gift of the pastor is the overseer of the church by the direction of the Holy Ghost. Who made them overseers? Holy Ghost. So that means that the office of the pastor is anything but natural. It's supernatural. Amen. There's nothing you need that you can't find in the local church. Right? The pastor... Notice he says, feed the flock of God that is among you. And then he says, to protect them. The pastor feeds the flock and protects the flock. And here's the thing. The feeding is a large part of the protection. Well-fed sheep are well-protected sheep. Amen. Amen. It's like one pastor said, he said, you got a problem with your sheep jumping the fence? And the pastor said, no, I keep them so fat they can't. <laughs> Amen. I mean, we've had a few waddle away, but none of them have ever jumped the fence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, why is this important? Because my pastor is feeding me the exact diet that I need. Well, I wish my pastor would preach on this. No, 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 settle down and be thankful that he's preaching on what he's preaching on. Because that's what you need. Right? Say amen, Jamie. Amen. Hallelujah. Got, Got these young preachers over here. And I don't mean that derogatorily. He's just young, young enough to be my boy. Pray, my You are my boy, spiritually. Amen. Where's your brother? The better looking one. I'm joking. Hallelujah. But you understand what I'm saying? Your pastor feeds you the exact diet that you need. Amen. Amen. And it it wards off. Listen, you, you do not answer exotic doctrine with exotic doctrine. You answer exotic doctrine with truth. Remember when, when, when Elisha went to the sons of the prophets and, and that one uh, uh, undiscerning young man that didn't know what he was doing went out and got some gourds that were poisonous and put it in the pot? Amen. And they started eating it. They said, oh man of God, there's death in the pot. And Elisha didn't go get some exotic recipe. It says he took cornmeal and put it in the pot. There's nothing more basic than cornmeal. Your pastor cares about you enough to labor in the Word and even minister things to you that you don't think are that exciting, but he knows you need it to grow. Yeah, but you know, we had evangelist so-and-so in and he came in and blew up and blew up and blew out. And man, we sweat and shouted and, and bounced off the walls. Yeah, that's his gift. And then the evangelist leaves and the pastor and the parent has to come back in and say, okay, that was great. Uncle Joe was here, but you know, and I know he's the fun uncle, but now we got to keep the family moving the direction. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. First Peter 5, am I helping you? Yes. It, this is so important. I love teaching on the local church. I love teaching and preaching about the office of the pastor. 
Because when you hear people, uh, you know, I've never really had anybody come up to me too much. Uh, when they talk about the fivefold ministry gifts, uh, they want to be an apostle, a prophet. Why? Oh, those are powerful gifts. Well, they are powerful. They all have their own power. But what's more powerful than the gift that speaks into your family week in and week out, month in and month out, day in and day out, year in and year out? There's, there's people in these churches. We've got babies here that have grown up in this church. Amen? Amen. We've got babies that are growing up in this church. We've got people that came here and were single and are married in this church. We've got three or four generations that are looking to grow up in this church. What is more important than the person that for three generations is speaking into your family? I can tell you nothing. Nothing's more important than that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and when you teach your children to look at that gift in that manner, that's your pastor. Amen. Things change. 1 Peter 5, verse 1. The elders, which is the pastors, which are among you, I exhort whom also a pastor, a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Notice, feed the flock of God which is among you. The phrase literally means as much as is in you. So in other words, give your whole self to this, guys. What? Feeding the flock. The most important thing a pastor can do is feed the sheep. Not make sure there's enough events. Not make sure that, that there's plenty of men's events every year and women's events. Keep everybody entertained. The most important thing that the pastor can do is feed the sheep. Amen. Not potluck. Chat and chew. Gossip and gripe. None of y'all do that, but right? But I, I've run into people, ah, you know, my, my pastor, we never have any dinners. Yeah, but your marriage was failing when you went there. Right? I mean, you weren't worried about a dinner then. You needed help. Don't, don't begin in the spirit and end up in the flesh. You know, we need a few more lights for our worship. You just need to worship first and maybe the lights will come. We need a better worship team. Well, that's like saying, I'll do more when you give me a raise. If you're not willing to shout and dance and worship with what you got, (laughs) amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) Taking the oversight thereof. And he says, not by restraint, or, uh, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples. Notice, feeding and exampleship. Not lording over. It's not my place to run your life. I have nothing to say about your life outside these doors. It's not my place. My job is to feed you. To show you what the Word of God says, I'm Fox News, I report, you decide. (coughs) So why didn't you say CNN? That's fake news, that's fake. (laughs) I'm joking, I'm joking. I don't know if it is or not, I don't watch any of it, that way I'm safe. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Feeding and exampleship. And then notice, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. That's the pastor's crown. I feed the flock. I'm an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd, notice that. I'm the shepherd. I have a chief shepherd. And when he appears, I will receive a crown that doesn't fade away. Amen. Amen. Look at uh, Hebrews 13 for a moment. Is this okay? Yes. 
God is positioning our fellowship, positioning our churches to move into greater things than ever before. Greater things than ever before. Amen. We uh, have talked about uh, uh, other ministers coming into the fellowship. Uh, we recently ordained Pastor James Mison from uh, 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 the uh, uh, island of Mindanao in the Philippines. as part of our ministry, bringing his churches under the Faith Builders Fellowship. Uh, Pastor Patricio Munoz in Quito, Ecuador, bringing all of his church in Ecuador and, and uh, Colombia under the fellowship banner. Uh, and, of course, uh, Pastor Eddie Quay, who I just spoke to the other day with his churches in Ghana, West Africa, under the fellowship banner. So we're, and, and, and then we have the, the church in Little Rock that's thriving and growing, and God's doing wonderful things there, as well as doing wonderful things here. God is positioning us to move in to what he has for us to do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And a season of receiving is upon us. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, read Hebrews 13, but a season of receiving is upon us. And I know that because God, that's what God has spoke to our fellowship. And as you're a part of the fellowship, that season of receiving is on you too. And I'm just announcing this, and you do whatever you want to. I'm declaring this over every church in our fellowship. You are flush with cash. Amen. You are flush with cash. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm declaring that there are no pastors in our fellowship that are going to struggle anymore with finances. Amen. Not going to happen. Say it out loud. My pastor, my pastor and my church, my church do not struggle, not struggle financially. financially. Amen. Now, Hebrews 13 and verse 17. Notice this. Now, this has been used wrong. I want you to see how the Bible says it. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. Why? For they watch for your souls. As they that must give an account. So I'm going to give an account for how I watch for your soul. But, now that's been used against pastors. It also means this. I'm also going to give an account for how you acted. You understand? So there's going to be some sheep that the pastor can stand. Now, this is none of y'all. There's, there's going to be some sheep that the pastor stands there and goes, Jesus, they gave me a hard time about everything. I tried to warn them about that, and they wouldn't listen. Now, they're not going to go to hell for that, but they'll miss out on their reward. Amen. I'm going to give an account for what I teach. That's why we teach out of the Bible. Amen. Right? Amen. But notice that they may do it with joy. Yeah. Whoo! Tell your neighbor, I'm a joy to my pastor. Now tell them, I mean it. I'm a joy to my pastor. That they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that's unprofitable for you. If they're doing it without joy, it is unprofitable for you. Amen. Look at 1 Timothy 3. And verse 15. The Apostle Paul, writing to Timothy, said, If I tarry long, it's so that you may know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. The word pillar is the support or the stay. The word ground means the anchor. Paul says in this writing to the pastor Timothy, he said the local church is the support and the anchor of the truth. The local church keeps you supported and anchored through the truth. There's no other entity that the Bible talks about in the New Testament in that manner except the local church.
Amen. Now notice this. Hallelujah. The local church is the hope of the world. Look at Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 through 3. We read this this morning over our Ezra Project giving. In the King James, it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house will be established in the top of the mountains and will be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come and let us go to the mountain of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob, and he'll teach us his ways, and we'll walk in his paths, for out of Zion will go forth the law. The New Living Translation says, In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of all, the most important place on earth. (coughs) The local church is the most important place on earth. There's no place more important than where you're at. What you're involved with. Why? It's the Lord's house. It's the pillar and the ground of the truth. It's the stay and the anchor. There's no other entity mentioned in the New Testament that we're told to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together in. He didn't suggest it. He said don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. He did not say if you gather together. He said, when you are gathered together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says, it will be raised above the other hills and people from all over the world will stream there to worship. The most important place on earth. Now think about that. If that's your mindset about the local church and your mindset about where God has placed you, that it's the most important place on the face of the earth, then it'll never be take it or leave it. If you will give your pastor six months of your life, your life will change. Forever. In six months, God can turn everything around. But it has to be the most important place on the face of the earth. Amen. Do you see this? And there's no higher honor than to pastor God's people. Because the Bible says they are the sheep of His pasture. Amen. Amen. That, That... it used to bother me that, that, you know, I'm going to give an account for sheep. And then I heard my pastor say one time that it used to bother him. And he said, Lord, how's that fair? I'm going to give an account for them. And the Lord took him over the scripture where it says, and David watched his father's sheep. When you, when you understand the role of every member of the local church, there are shepherds and there are sheep. There's also goats and wolves. We milk goats and rock wolves. Shepherds and sheep. It's a mutually dependent relationship. There, There would be no church, no local church without the pastor, but there'd be no need for the pastor without the sheep. When you come to the local church, you don't have to give. You desire to give because that's your part. That's my part. Right? The most important place on the face of the earth. So what God has asked us to do, churches coming into our fellowship, us planting other churches, it's the most important thing in the world. Because it's the most important place on the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. When my kids were small, and most of them are, are well, all of them are grown, except the one that, that uh, we have at home, our three-year-old. 
And uh, uh, no, it wasn't an Abraham and Sarah thing. We adopted her. <laughs> Amen. Just want to make sure you know that, Abradan. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you see Dan, he's back there. He's like. <laughs> and he's red as a beet right now. <laughs> but they used to watch a, 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 a cartoon, uh, Pinky and the Brain. Every show, Pinky would say, what are we doing today, brain? Same thing we do every day, Pinky, taking over the world. I've told my staff for years, they'll say, what are we doing today, Pastor? I says, same thing we do every day, changing the world. Amen. And you're a part of that. You're a part, you're a part of changing Lee Summit, Missouri. Amen. It will never be the same. Because you're there. Amen. Amen. When you go into a city and you stake out the territory, you're saying, God's here. And it's not that other churches aren't doing what they need to be doing, but they're not doing what you can do. They're not reaching who you can reach. And everybody that needs what you are will stream to you. Because you're the most important place in that city for them. Amen. Amen. I had a guy tell me one time, don't you know there's three other churches starting around your city? I said, Ann, what's that, what's that got to do with anything? What do, you, what do you want me to put guards down there and say, y'all can't go to that church, you got to come to mine? I want who God wants me to have and who needs what we are. If, if you go to Pastor Mark and Angela Gazaway's church, it's because you need what they are. Amen. You don't need what I am. You need what they are. Amen. And if you ever go from where you're supposed to be getting what you need, you won't get it because not just anybody can give it to you. Amen. It has to be that person that's called to speak into my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God. And so the vision is bright. And I, I, can, I can speak for both bodies. It's bright. You know, at, at, at your church in Lee Summit, you've had a rebirth. And there's something I've learned about birth. It's never painless. I mean, they can give you something to help with the pain. But in natural, in birth, it's always associated with pain. But it's birthing something beautiful. God doesn't send the pain. But it's a part of the process. And if you can get through the process of birthing something new. Think about this. You are birthing something that hell can't stop. It's that strong. Why? Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And if hell can't stop it, nobody can stop it. <laughs> Amen. Neither the enemy over the years has fought my mind sometimes. Well, this is going to happen. Now, wait a minute. Even you can't stop the church, so how can that stop the church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So yeah, it's a challenge. You've had to change some things. You've been in an uncomfortable situation. And I'm not making light of that. But guess what? You made it. Amen. You're still there. You're still lifting up holy hands to God. You're still worshiping God. The word's still going forth. Amen. Amen. And you got a building Amen. that you just poured concrete in. Yes. You're getting ready to put up walls and sheetrock. Yes. You're looking. We're believing with you. You're going to be in there by Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Amen. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. Yes. And you'll come in there on that Sunday morning and say, this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Yes. Look what the Lord has done. 
and nobody will be able to take any credit for it except God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you can say unequivocally, this is the most important place on the face of the earth. Because through those doors will stream people that need their lives turned around and their marriages fixed and their family put back together and they need addiction broken off of their life and they need healings in their body and God put you in the center of that city for such a time as this and everything you went through and the pain you experienced and the struggle that you went through and the birthing that you had to go through every time you pull up in that parking lot and you see that building you'll say look what the Lord has done and then there'll be fruits of your labor there'll be people getting saved black folk, white folk, Hispanic folk every ethnicity. Why? He said, all nations will stream to that place. Shh. Hallelujah. 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 And there's nothing the devil can do about it. Isn't that great? Hallelujah. And you keep that mindset. You keep that mindset. The things we went through. The things we, that, that, that we birthed. Because nobody else, listen to me, nobody else will be able to say they birthed that except you. Everybody else that comes and gets saved, that's great. They came and got saved. But they weren't there when the labor pains were going on. They weren't there when the birth pains were going on. They will hear the testimony, but they will never really know what it took to produce what God has done for you. But you know. Yes. Amen. 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 And every time you think about it, it will cause in you joy and rejoicing to God. Why? Because you'll be the one that remembers when there was nothing on that lot. You'll be the one that remembers when you went in there and the city said, nope, can't do it. Not going to do it. We're not going to give you the, we're not going to give you the permits. We're not going to do it. But what'd you do? Amen. And all of a sudden, okay, yeah, we'll give you the permits. We'll, right? Hallelujah. And you'll, you really understand now what it means that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You went into that city at least some and you took it. Raytown. You went into that city and you took it. You took it. You didn't wait for them to give it to you. You took it. Amen. We, we came into this city of DeSoto and it was ripe with racism. There were, there were no integrated churches in this city. None. Man, we bought two big buses, and we started busing about 150 people in, 200 people every Sunday. Every one of them a person of color. African-American, Hispanic, different, different ethnicities. You say, what happened? The devil got mad. They, they threw watermelons at our bus. We, we'd stop and get fuel and they'd make ape noises, racist comments. You say, what'd you do? We just kept busting people in. Because I told the Lord, I'm not going to pastor a lily white church. I'm not going to pastor a church that doesn't represent my city and doesn't represent who, who, who we are. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, now we got white folk, black folk, Hispanic folk, mixed folk, folk that don't know what they are. <laughs> and, and you're moving into the same thing. I say, so you're not a black church. You're not a white church. You're not a Hispanic church. You're the church. You're the church of the living God. And whoever comes, you minister to. Whoever comes, you help. Whoever comes, you put them on the right road. Because you cannot be defined by a race. You're going to reach everybody. I'm telling you, think about that. We're reaching them in the west. You're reaching them in the east. My 
My God. It's big. It's big. And I'm telling you, and you do what you want to do with it. I'm telling you prophetically, you better prepare for a flood. Because it's coming. The, the word that the Lord gave us in the first part of that word, I'm going to say this, we're going to move on. He said that the last four months of 2019, some of y'all will remember this, that they were loaded. He said in the word that he gave us for 2020 that the last four months of 2019 were loaded as a preparatory phase for what he wanted to do in 2020. And when I first started meditating on that, I thought a platter, like a platter loaded down with, you know, something. Food, chicken, something. A box loaded. But the more I meditated on that, the Holy Spirit showed me a cannon. Loaded. And I saw the pin pulled. And that thing blasted what you've been believing for into this year. It's coming that quick. I said it's coming that quick. He said in that word to look for things to happen quicker than they've ever happened before. So here's what I'm saying. You built that church. We built these churches. It's not going to take you five years to fill it up. I'm declaring over your church that you're financially independent. Any debt that you have on that church will be paid off. I can say that because there's no debt on our ministry. None. There's an anointing that flows. And I'm telling you, you're debt free. You do whatever you need to do with that. And when we talk about, I want you to be very clear about this. When we talk about coming into our fellowship. When people come into our fellowship, we don't do, have anything to do with the organization of their church. That's up to them and what God. We are a spiritual covering that provides a flow of anointing. I got enough to do to pastor the two I have. I'm not going to go pastor Pastor Marks. Amen. Because to you, the two most anointed people in your life are sitting on the front row. Amen. Amen. They know what to do. We know what to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The best years of our fellowship are ahead of us. It's bright. The future's bright. Future's bright. I believe God. Amen. So we're going to uh, move on with the next part of our ceremony, our service, and we want to, uh, in a moment, lay hands on Pastor Mark and Angela and set them, ordain them as pastors. It's a holy moment. And uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, You know, that's why Paul wrote Timothy and he said, here's what you need to do. He said, you need to preach the word. You need to be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. Because that's our job. Hallelujah. But it's a holy moment. This is not something done by man. It's something done by the Holy Ghost. God has set some in the church. And he gave some to be pastors hallelujah and so with that in mind and just with this atmosphere of uh, reverence for the holy things of God hallelujah we're, we're going to proceed into this and uh, you know the Bible says when Paul wrote Timothy he said lay hands suddenly on no man He said, lest you be partakers of another man's sin. In other words, know those that you're ordaining. And and I'll tell you, uh, of course, I've known my sister all my life. (laughs) 
That's a good thing. But I, I know them, and I know that their consecration doesn't waver. I, I know the life they live. I know that they're like us. They're not perfect. But I know that their desire for the things of God is pure. Amen. Amen. And you can go with that. Amen. Amen. And, and, and they've known me. They've seen me make mistakes. I've seen them make mistakes. And here's one thing that I hope all three of us have learned is that we know how to repent and get back up and keep going. Amen. 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 I've had people before say, well, you don't know what I've done. I've looked at them and said, you don't know what I've done. (laughs) Not talking about blatant sin, you understand. But when we lay hands on them tonight, something's going to shift. It's going to shift in their ministry. It's going to shift in the relationship. It's It's a turning point. I'm telling you, it's a turning point. And, and what God is able to do will be magnified. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So uh, if y'all can take care of this for me, praise the Lord. We will uh, move forward. Amen. I want to call the elders of the church. Y'all come on tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And... Uh, Pastors, I don't know if you all have anybody that you would like to have come up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we have somebody play something? Just whomever. Thank you, Lord. So, of course, we have the elders of our body. And they've asked the elders, uh, some of the elders of their body to come. Because Scripture says, Paul told Timothy, he said, uh, to remember and stir up the gift that was in him. And he talks about the laying on of his hands, but in another instance, he talks about the laying on of the hands of the presbytery, the elders. And uh, everyone, especially, and and I don't know, obviously, everyone from uh, their church, but I know the elders here are spiritual people, and they desire uh, this to be a great success. And uh, so what we're going to do is if... Uh, Pastor Mark, Pastor Angela, if y'all would come right here. Uh, I'm going to have them stand here. And if I could just have the elders to come behind them to the sides. My God. My God. You know, sometimes you just need to know as a pastor, somebody called to do something. You just need to know Somebody cares enough about you to put confidence in you. Amen. The greatest thing my pastor instills in me is this belief in me. I believe in you. And you know, by us laying our hands on them tonight, we're saying we believe in you. And we believe that God's called you to do this. And we'll support it as as elders, right? We're saying we'll support this ministry. We'll support it financially will support it spiritually. Amen. And I'm telling the whole church, all of all of the church from Raytown, their church, y'all are y'all will never be alone again. Jesus. Ever again. Amen. Because when you're walking down that alley, you're not going to have to look for me. I'm there. I promise. We promise. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So just gather around, guys and ladies. Father, now in accordance with your word, we enter into this moment and we don't enter lightly and we don't enter flippantly because we know it's not just a 
ceremony of men, it's a holy thing. And Lord, I've searched my heart and I've searched my spirit. And I've made sure in my life that there's no unrepentant sin. Because I want to lay holy hands on them. And as myself and the elders lay hands on these pastors, we set them apart for service. And we ordain them into this office of pastor. So, Father, by the power that you've invested in me, as the apostle of this fellowship, the pastor of this church, I lay my hands on them. And I ordain them into the office of the pastor. And may they walk in this anointing and shepherd the flock that you've given them. And may they be strong in the Lord. May they be stalwart in their convictions. Standing up, Lord, for the Word of God. Because you said to the wor- in the Word you gave us that those that stand for the Word will receive what you promised. And so I charge you. Preach the word. Be strong in the Lord. Because He will be with you. He will help you. He will uphold you by the right hand of His righteousness. And no matter what comes and what goes, He will be there. And you shall be a success. Oh Lord. Because of what you're hooked up to. You won't fail. So don't fear it. Don't even give it a second thought. For the walls will come up and the rooms will be built and the platform will be in place and the worshipers will worship and the spirit will flow and the word will go forth and many, many, many lives many lives will be changed so buy extra chairs in the beginning because you're going to have to pull them out And you'll look back to this night and you'll say, yeah, Lord, you said that to us. And it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there'll come a time when the glory of the Lord will settle in your congregation to such a, a magnitude that many, if not all, will fall on their face. Nobody will pray for them. Nobody will speak words over them. Because I'm I'm telling you this, you're not going to attract the word seekers. You're not going to attract those people that just want a gimmick or want entertainment. You're going to attract people that want the word and the moving of the spirit. Because you are from this moment forward a word and spirit church. And they'll lay under the power of God. And they'll get up delivered. And they'll get up healed. And they'll get up transformed. And there'll be times you'll walk to the pulpit with a message prepared that I gave you. But when you open your mouth, it'll be prophecy. It'll be prophetic utterances. And it will move people. Expect it. Because it shall be done. Not many days hence. Hmm. Somebody's coming to help you. I can see him in the spirit. And he's going to have knowledge 
of what you don't know. <laughs> and it's in a natural sense. Because the Lord says, I've sent you people that support you spiritually and even help you to a measure naturally. They're strong in the spirit. I'm sending you somebody that has the natural knowledge that you need. And he's going to fill in the gaps. Ha <laughs> ha. So prepare. For the river runs deep and the spirit's strong. Ha, ah, Lord, I'll say that. And this is your very last night of normal in your church. From now on, it's supernatural. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if each of the elders, if you just come and shake their hand and hug their neck and let them know we're, we're for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Aha. Hallelujah. And uh, Pastor Mark, Pastor Angela, hallelujah. And uh, something to go with them. God bless you. Cat, lead us in that one time before we go. Build their faith. So, Father, we're so grateful tonight for what you've done in our midst. We thank you for the positioning of this fellowship, of these churches, to move forward into all that you've asked us to do. 
And I thank you for every minister represented here, every member represented here. Father, I thank you that their part is much larger and much greater than they perceive. And I ask you in the name of Jesus to reveal to them the bigness of their mission. The bigness of what they're a part of. That we are changing worlds with the Word of God. Thank you. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for restoring everything that was lost. And we'll be very careful to give you the glory for it. Because you are a great good God. <laughs> and we'll declare that what you've done for us, you'll do for others. Till the end of our days. In Jesus' name. Amen. I believe God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, come on. Say it with me tonight. The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the Word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this message. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or want to share how this message has helped you, send us an email at main at buildfaith.net. This message and many more materials are available to you free of charge, can be found at buildfaith.net or at any of our location media stores. As always, keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God.